I'm back to give you an update about round four of the FIDE chess.com Grand Swiss. In the open section, Grandmaster Hare Krishna won his game, and in the women section, Vaishali won the game. So the other results were either a draw or loss for Indians. So I'm going to take you through some of the interesting moments from round four, starting with the game of Grandmaster Hare Krishna Pentala. I spent some time on this game and uh, I think this is a great chance for all of you to also use this entire game as an exercise. So this game Hare Krishna Pentala was black and he's playing against Moses and Sergey. I think it's also a very experienced grandmaster and uh, in this game Hare Krishna opted for the open Spanish with d4 b5 and uh, I think in this game uh, most of it was already prepared by Hare Krishna. Uh, the opening was pretty theoretical in nature and here in this position after f6 knight bd2 was played by Fedosiv on uh, chess.com last year and this was against Mamidyarov their game went knight d2 and bishop e3 but in this game after f6 Mosesian played ef6 and after bishop e3 queen e3 queen f6 knight d2 knight d2 knight d2 bishop f7 the position is somewhat equal but maybe white has some pressure considering the weak c5 square. I am coming to the critical position after knight takes e5, queen takes e5. This is in fact the new move. Uh, earlier move rook into e5 was played in a correspondence match in 2016 between uh, Hegeland and Laurent in uh, 2016. So queen takes e5 happened and uh, after a4 he played rook b8. So I'm coming to the interesting moment now. After rook e1, queen d6, queen d6, c d6. If you take a stock of this position, you will see that white has uh, six pawns and black has six pawns. But black's pawns are doubled on the d-line, which means at least one of them is likely to fall. And in this position, if a white uh, wants to play on uh, these factors, maybe a5 is interesting. But what happened in the game was a takes b5. So I looked at it a bit and, and saw that after a5, Hare Krishna was probably going to play d4. So that after bishop f7, king f7, c d4, he can find the counterplay on the open lines with rook c8. Here is a sample line to give you an idea as to how these endings will eventually turn up. For example, after rook c8, let's say white also challenges the c line, then there is rook e8. Now, Black is intending to capture at least one rook so that you get the e2 or c2 square. And now let's say white plays rook e d1, then you take on c1 and play rook to e2. Obviously this rook uh, has to give a check if it has to move, otherwise there is a back rank. So let's say rook check and then h4. Back rank problem is solved but b2 hangs. And once black takes b2 pawn, white will go after let's say d6 pawn and then go after the a6 pawn. So eventually after all these exchanges, I think the game is heading towards a draw. This is one possible continuation just to give you an idea of how the game could have progressed if white had played a5. But in the game, uh, Mosesian chose to keep it uh, simple with a takes b5 and after rook takes b5, now you can see that this rook on a1 can actually capture on a6 if he wants to. But for now, the bishop is hanging. So once the bishop's problem is solved, a6 will be the target. So for a moment it looks like uh, it is white who is in the driving seat, but Hare Krishna had it all in control. After bishop d1, he picked up the pawn on b2. And uh, in this position, if uh, white takes the pawn on a6, then you can see that this rook on f8 can also be now uh, used with uh, bishop g6, keeping an eye on f2. Also, you can also consider moves like rook e8 or d4, c d4, rook b1. There are many counter chances for black. Considering this, probably Mosesian played bishop f3. I mean, he, he thought that there's a lot of play associated with the f line and so he played bishop f3. And in this position, Hare Krishna came back to protect his pawn on a6. The position right now, black is a pawn up, but it's not so relevant right now because one of them is likely to fall. Rook e7. I think in this position, rook e7 was an interesting possibility and if rook fp8 threatening rook b1, then white could go g4. So at least now that rook is on the 7th rank, it could come to a7 and eventually attack a6. In the game, he played h3 and after rook c8, rook a3, king f8, rook e a1. 
slowly it became more and more difficult to capture the pawn back so black objectively is a pawn up right now and that is one uh, psychological pressure also because if you don't get the pawn back then um, you know black is going to say black is a pawn up and then hope to conquer c3 as well and once you lose c3 white has additional problem and that is the d passer and after rook e1 king e7 rook checking f6 rook e1 hari krishna gave back the pawn at a very convenient time so let me come to that position here he played bishop e6 preparing uh, preparing for uh, the exchanges after rook a6 rook a6 rook a6 there came rook c3 and now rook takes d6 and here in this position there is a deadly trap now i wanted to understand the danger in this position what i did here was after king e5 i set this position uh, on chess.com so i went to chess.com slash analysis i copied the fan i pasted the fan and then on the extreme bottom at the right side there is a an option to called practice versus computer so i clicked on it and tried to play this position as white and uh, i played rook a6 which is actually the correct move i played it because i knew that this is a correct move it's not that i uh, you know found it so after rook a6 uh, let's say uh, black plays uh, g6 this is what the computer played against me you will see that it's not so easy to play as white so i was white in this game and the computer was uh, black i played rook a5 to pin and uh, black played h5 and i'm now going through the game and you will see that slowly the computer managed to outplay me so the pawn is going towards d3 d2 d1 and i try to stop it and now i try to play uh, you know the rook behind the passer kind of uh, an idea but it did not help also the finish was nice um, I would call it humorous in this position after rook d8. I thought, okay, d1 queen is not happening. And uh, if rook f3, I was considering rook d2. But anyway, the position is lost. But the computer chose bishop h3 here. And then rook takes d3. d1 queen is unstoppable. Now, why I did this? I think this is something that you can also consider doing. Uh, go to the position where you or your opponent made mistakes. Try to change the move and continue to get the most out of the position. Also, I would recommend playing this position out with the computer or with a friend and uh, see if you can hold this position as white. It's not so easy. And at least I was not able to hold it. Uh, I, I was playing a blitz match with the computer. I was not able to hold this. And uh, also, I think um, the game illustrates how dangerous this position is. In this position, uh, Mosesian went wrong immediately with rook d8. And now I think uh, it's a great chance for you to find out why. Okay, in this position, if you chose a rook c8, then it's a mistake because after rook c8, bishop c8, the king comes to f1, and the king has a certain hold against the d pawn. So Hare Krishna very smartly first played the check to push the king away, and once the king goes to h2, he played rook c8. This rook is trapped. And this rook has to be exchanged. So rook into c8, bishop into c8. Now you see a major difference. The d pawn is very dangerous. And uh, Hare Krishna Pantala duly converted this advantage very nicely. And uh, it's important to note that black had the right color rook pawn. Uh, you will know what I mean in this position. White's plan was to sacrifice the bishop for the d pawn and then eventually capture the kingside pawns, but that was not meant to be because after all these moves, eventually Hare Krishna Pentala was able to save his h pawn and win the game. And this is a right color bishop because you see h pawn is light square and we have a light square bishop. So that was the win for Grandmaster Hare Krishna. A very nice win, and I think I learned a lot from this end game. I hope you also did. Now let's go to the game between uh, Nihal Sarin and uh, Pongratov. In case of Nihal Sarin, uh, Nihal was white and uh, after this position, Bishop B2, they, uh, uh, his, uh, Hare Krishna, sorry, uh, Pongratov Pavel just repeated after Bishop takes H2. This has already played uh, before the entire line. So I have a feeling that um, the players knew their territory and uh, they just agreed to a draw here because of the perpetual. Then in the game between uh, 
when for this Jordan and Ganguly, I must definitely show you this one moment after B6. Here, um, Van Forest Jordan played C5, which I would call double X slam. It's a brilliant move, I think. This was a result of a home preparation uh, of Jan Forest, Van Forest Jordan. He has talked about this in the stream. We have also shared the video in the uh, chess.com India social media. You can take a look as to why he played this and the idea behind it. And he got a very pleasant position. Um, he launched a mating net, a mating attack on the king side. You see all the pieces are very well coordinated. They are all in action. In this position, he criticized the move rook a c8. He felt that this was not the best. The best move was probably queen e7 to achieve c5 and knight f6. So first you play knight f6, move the bishop and then c5. This was one defensive idea which Ganguly missed. So in the game he played rook c8 and after bishop b2 and c5. All the pieces look really bad for black. And uh, there was a very nice uh, exchange sack after f5, rook b3, bishop c8. He played bishop takes f5 knowing that after knight d5 he has to give up the exchange. And he did that with bishop b1. Now that the knight is no longer in the game, attack against the king becomes very easy. And in a few moves he went on to win the game. A very nice move at the end, rook d3. The point is if black plays let's say a null move like a5. Then there is queen check and then there is a killer rook takes d7 and uh, let's say if rook d7 there is queen takes e8 that was a nice win by van forest seturaman played against gelfen boris and uh, i don't think he got anything out of the opening the game totally went into opposite color bishops and eventually seturaman drew this game in the opposite color bishop end game in the game versus uh, Sanan Sujirov and Erigasi Arjun, I think uh, Arjun Erigasi had a very solid position until here. And after Queen C7, C4, I think this was the moment where he went wrong. He could have just played uh, something like B6 or just played Rook takes Rook and Queen D8 just to stay in the game without doing much. But he played a committal move C5, which opened this line and this became very dangerous for Black. Eventually, Sanan won the game. In the game between uh, Ronak Sadwani and Matlakov Maxim, uh, Ronak was black and uh, I think he played a solid game. In this position, they agreed to a draw. White could consider playing f5, but after ef, gf, bishop b3, I think black is okay. So, draw was a good result. In the game between uh, Jonas Bol versus Adiban, uh, here Adiban played e5, missing a brilliant move by white, and white in fact played it. He played queen takes c8. Um, the queen sacrifice. The idea is that after rook c8, there is this check that follows, and then rook at six, and the game, uh, you know, transposes into uh, opposite colored bishop endgame, and this was very well converted by the white side. So this was a win by Jonas Bull, and now Adiban will have to strike really hard to make a comeback. Next, we have the game between uh, Sevian Samuel and Pranananda. I think this game uh, was pretty complicated. Uh, both sides had chances. Uh, one, one moment which I would like to highlight is, uh, is this position. I think after bishop b3 h4, bishop b3 h4, bishop d5, c d5, f4. I think in this position, maybe he could have uh, taken the pawn. There was a moment where he could have captured the pawn. Let me go to that. Yeah, h4, bishop takes d5. Instead of h4. So here, this is the position. I Not the pawn, I meant the bishop, which bishop into b3. And now if a b3, h4. At least this way, you are doubling white's uh, queen side pawns. But this did not happen. He played h4 first, and after bishop d5, c d5, f4 came. I think another uh, chance which uh, he missed was after b5. To put the knight on e5 to facilitate d3 d2. He went knight b4 and uh, the problem with this move is after a4 uh, d3. Rook comes to f4 to push the knight. Uh, but if the knight were on e5 the same cannot be said. The knight is pretty solid on e5. Then Pragnanda lost this game. In the game between uh, Artemev and Sasikiran they repeated in this position with bishop s3, bishop g4. Again a solid result for Grandmaster Sasikiran. In the game between Fedosev and uh, Gukesh, um, I think this was also 
posted as a puzzle on chess.com India's social page. Why to play and draw? The draw is very pleasing. You play d6, forcing black to take, and then you play bishop d6, threatening rook e7, and black has to prevent it. And then you capture the bishop, and then there is this perpetual. King has to come to e8 to support the rook, and then it's a perpetual. So that was how this game ended. In the game between um, Harika Donovalli and uh, Zhu Zainer, I think. Um, Yeah, this was a Harika versus Zuzainer. In this game, um, Harika was actually in danger. And I think draw is a very good result considering the kind of position she got out of the opening. Uh, let me go. Yeah, here. Yeah, I think this uh, draw is a good result. One moment where I think um, White had a very good chance was this position. I think bishop b6 and then e6. But let's say if bishop b6, rook b8, bishop b3, and then eventually 6, white is better. But her opponent played e6, which made the defending task, the task to defend this position easy for Harika. She played f6 and consolidated. So then she drew the game. In the game between Padmini Raut and uh, Kashlinskaya, I think Padmini had a great way to win the game. Um, let me go to that position after rook into f2. In this position, her opponent played rook takes f2, uh, a desperate attempt to complicate matters. And uh, white could have just taken the rook, but white played knight d5, allowing queen g3, and uh, black is winning because after queen g2, uh, black is ahead in material. So, this is how the game progressed. But king into f2 was a very good move. Idea is if queen f7 check, there is knight f5. If you take the rook, then there is knight takes e7 followed by queen g6, king h8. You can also take this pawn, give a check with the bishop. Bishop, queen and bishop, it's a deadly combination. So this was one way to win the game, which Padmini missed. Vaishali played a very convincing game with the white side. Uh, she used her space advantage well. One very nice moment which I want to show you is after rook d8. She took advantage of the drawback. The rook is no longer protecting the knight. So she played queen c4. And if the knight moves, let's say to b8, there is also e5, there is also knight e7. And if you play rook c8, there is b5. Again, when the knight moves, there is this knight takes e7 idea, which helped her to win the game. In the game between uh, Anna and Vantika, I think Vantika had a great position in this, in this game. Uh, she chose to repeat with uh, bishop c4 and uh, bishop e2 but i think after f5 black has very good chances to play for a win because this this bishop on c1 cannot really do anything if it moves here then knight f4 is coming if this bishop goes in this diagonal rook b2 is coming i think black has a great position but she repeated here and she drew and in the game between uh, divya deshmukh and um, sophie millet i think um, uh, Divya did well to hold this position. She was a pawn down, but yeah, she played a long game of 107 moves and eventually drew the game. So I think that was a good result. Uh, she defended the position well. Now let's take a look at the results. You see, these are the results of round four. And now I'm going to take you through the pairings of round five. Nihal will be playing against Petrosia and Hare Krishna versus Swiss Sarvis, Sasikran versus Fedusiv, Gukesh versus David Navara, Pragnananda is playing against Mamedo Rov, Ronak Sadwani will play against Rakmanov, Sethu Raman versus Kori George, Arjun versus Koryachkina Alexandra. Wow, that's a great clash. Ganguly versus Luka and uh, Adiban versus Rakotomaru 5. Harika versus Pogonin again a very interesting clash. Vantika versus Abdul Malik and uh, Muguntul will play Padmini, Vaishali versus Melia and Divya versus Madara. Those are the pairings. Again, don't forget to watch the broadcast on chess.com slash TV. I hope you liked uh, the examples, especially Grandmaster Hari Krishna Pentala's win. And I enjoyed uh, talking about that particular game. I'll be back with another video soon. Uh, hit the like button. I'll be back. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.